The Horus Heresy was a particularly fun and wacky period of Imperial history. Patrick, we saved the city! Just think what might have happened if we didn't tell everyone about the monster! About the what? Wherein a lot of phenomena occurred that generally never happened outside of it. Anything from Marines joining other legions that they had no genetic heritage with, weird genetic experimentation, or in this case, the emergence of Black Shields. Now, what a Black Shield is, is a Space Marine or group of Space Marines who have renounced their former legion and have abandoned all their former livery in favor of plain black armor, hence the name Black Shields. Now, a common misconception about Black Shields is that they were Marines from traitor legions who renounced their fathers and chose to fight for the Imperium as their own irregular units. While this did happen fairly often, it was not the hard and fast rule. Indeed, Black Shield is a very general term and can apply to a lot of things, as we'll see later. The only real unifying factor for a quote-unquote Black Shield is a Marine who is no longer associated with their previous Legion. Indeed, some of them actually kept their former colors. So, again, it is a very loose term, but a very interesting one. Now, Black Shields are different from the Shattered Legions, because the Shattered Legions were specifically from Loyalist elements of the three Legions that had been decimated at Istvan V. The Iron Hands, Raven Guard, and Salamanders, who all sort of fought their own guerrilla wars against the traitors. Another difference being, all Shattered Legions forces, like the Orphans of War, formed in the wake of the Dropsite Massacre, but Black Shield units would be formed throughout the course of the Heresy for varying reasons and with varying ideals. Most were former traitors now fighting for the Loyalist cause, some were actually former Loyalists now fighting for the traitors, and a good few were actually pirates. Marines who had abandoned any cause to fight for and said, screw it, we'll carve out our own small fiefdoms or just operate as independent Corsair units just for fun. It's also a common misconception that Black Shields only really operated during the Horus Heresy. And while yes, that definitely was the heyday, there is one big exception to that, which I will get into later. Now, when people think Black Shield, what usually comes to mind is the character of Endred Har, the Riven Hound a particularly large former World Eater who would become one of Malkador's chosen and would eventually die during the fighting at Saturnine. He led a group called the Fangs of the Emperor, who, while not actively working alongside Loyalist units or really cooperating with anybody, were comprised of mostly the aforementioned Loyalist elements from Traitor Legions, and funnily enough, a lot of Death Guard. It just seems to be this running theme that a lot of Black Shields were Death Guards. In the short story titled Black Shields, for instance, we meet a Black Shield Death Guard warband who broke with Mortarion later on in the Heresy after the Battle of Molech because they were disgusted with the fact that Mortarion was now using sorcery. They believed he was a hypocrite and lost, so they just sort of went their own way entirely. In fact, Endred Har's second in command was a Tech Marine Death Guard who forswore allegiance not just to his own old legion or to the traitor cause, but to everything that wasn't Mars. This sort of fracturous loyalties is something that would cause friction between them, and Endred Har would end up beating the living shit out of him just to get his compliance with something. That's something interesting about Black Shields. The idea that they were not wholly unified and they needed a lot of diplomacy to get people on side. Now, if you're Har or any world leader, that diplomacy is going to be just punching someone until they say yes. But in the case of a different group called the Disciples of Flame, it was much more interesting. See, this was a Shattered Legions organization, but were still considered Black Shields because they broke with what was normally expected of them. While most Shattered Legion groups focused on fighting a guerrilla war against the traitors, these guys were more focused on finding their lost Primarchs. Yes, most of them were Salamanders, but they departed from Baal where they had been sort of seeking refuge, believing, no, Vulcan is alive, we will find him, and they were actually joined by a number of Ravenguard and Iron Hands who believed the same thing. This is what got them that title of Black Shield, because they were denounced by the Blood Angels for not properly cooperating. And, more interestingly, they would be joined by Iron Warriors, because they would fight against a joint Iron Warriors and Alpha Legion task force on a planet called Mizoan. But, they would appeal to the Iron Warriors, 
in this notion of you're being used by the Alpha Legion for frontal assault and to spare blood while they do their normal Alpha Legion things, you should side with us. Aren't you just tired of being screwed? Don't you just want to go loyalist? And funnily enough, they did, and they got along really well. We don't know what happened to them, but that's really interesting. That's a really cool group, and I wish they got featured in the Horus Heresy books instead of just the Forge World campaign books. And speaking of we don't know what happened to them, we don't really know what happens to a lot of these guys. Now, we do have some records in that a lot of them who were loyalist went back to fight during the Siege of Terra. Namely, a lot of them went down in the Solar War and that's all we hear of them. The Brotherhood of Set and the Burnt Word are two notable ones who did fight in the Solar War, and from their names I think we can assume that they were Thousand Sons and Wordbearer Loyalists respectively. Outside of them, there was also a group called the Death Eagles, who were Emperor's Children Loyalists, but who never abandoned their old livery, sticking with that old purple and gold theme. We also have evidence of Raven Guard, Space Wolves, and even Iron Hands who did turn traitor and fight for Horus's cause. Now, I'm not sure how that decision was reached. Okay, Space Wolves, maybe you were just like awful and Russ hated you, but the Raven Guard and Iron Hands? How do you spin that? Like, what justification do you have? <laughs> And in some instances, it can get even weirder than that, because a group called the Third Covenant seemed to be aligned with the traitors, but in reality were pursuing their own nebulous, independent goals, and under the black of their armor could be seen the heraldry of Thousand Sons and Sons of Horus, legions that were traitor and who you should probably be fighting for anyway unless you had some really weird cause going on. And it gets even weirder when you look at a group called the Garrison Host, because they weren't from any legion, they were chimeric. They were the result of, quote, unsanctioned and rapid gene experimentation done by an unknown actor. See, whenever you get these chimeric legions, like the old iteration of the Minotaurs, who are presumed to have some sort of world eater in them, they're always really unstable and kind of crazy, because it's really hard to mix gene seed like that, and this was no exception. They first appeared as some sort of shock troop terror weapon deployed alongside a joint force of Death Guard and Emperor's Children. And when you say Emperor's Children, I immediately assume, okay, Fabius Bile had something to do with this. He's the guy who did the whatever weird experimentation that created these monsters. It's always Fabius Bile. Now, again, these guys don't really exist past the Horus Heresy. In fact, there's one really big example, and only one, of a Black Shield group from the Heresy that still operates today. That being a Raven Guard offshoot called the Ashen Claws. And these guys have an enduring legacy, so let's get into that. Now, when you think Raven Guard Black Shield, you're probably going to think a traitor, someone fighting for Horus. But these guys' roots as independents go back way before the Heresy. What had happened with them was that, while working alongside the Sons of Horus, they developed a really brutal and bloodthirsty fighting style. And when Corvus Corax found out about this, he cast them out and had them sent to the far reaches of the galaxy. Now, that was such a bitter split that Korax even made no effort to contact them when the Horus Heresy broke out, but they did return of their own volition, and immediately started raiding planets in and around the Nostromo sector. That was their whole big theme throughout the Horus Heresy, just being a huge pain in the ass for the Night Lords. Funnily enough though, despite that being, yeah, a pretty loyalist thing to do, they denied any affiliation with either Horus or the Imperium, apparently believing Corvus Corax to be dead. This happened when they were hailed by Ultramarines, who they were fighting alongside, to push back Night Lords. Honestly, it just seemed their entire goal was to just kill Night Lords, and that's it. And funnily enough, even further still, these guys are actually still active all the way up until M41. We have records of them fighting and working alongside the Karcharodons, that really cool shark-themed chapter that was active a lot in the Badab War. They trade recruits, materials, intelligence, and a lot of people believe the Karcharodons are Raven Guard descent and come from the Ashen Claws, which does feel credible to me, honestly. Now, what I've mentioned here, generally speaking, only really existed within the era of the Horus Heresy or immediately after in the Great Scouring. But there is one example of Black Shields up until the 40th millennium, that being Black Shield Death Watch Marines. Now, for those who might not know, 
What the Death Watch is, is the chamber militant of the Ordo Xenos of the Inquisition. They're meant to deal with alien threats, work with Xenos artifact recovery, and many other such things. It's a very highly specialized unit. And most members of the Death Watch are not only of Death Watch. They still exist as part of their previous legions. The Death Watch will seek out members to join them for a certain period of time by which a crisis is dealt with and they are let go from the Watch Fortress they were staying at during that time and can return back to their old legions. That's why they wear the livery of their old legions on their pauldron. So even though someone is wearing Death Watch black, you can see that they're still an Ultramarine or an Imperial Fist or what have you. They fulfill their duty and then return to their old legions. Yes, but Death Watch Black Shields do not do that. These are Marines who have forsworn any and all loyalties and now only fight for the Death Watch permanently. And it's really interesting because the other members of the Death Watch that they serve alongside aren't supposed to pry or try to ask or inquire about who they're actually serving alongside. It's just accepted. It's almost like a sort of don't ask, don't tell sort of thing. The only one who will have some idea of their previous genetic heritage will be the Watch Commander, who is the one that the Black Shield will approach and ask, hey, can I join Death Watch? Now see, something like this will only really happen for two reasons. One, if a Marine's entire chapter was wiped out and they're the sole survivor with nowhere else to go, or two, if their chapter has turned traitor and they're like the last loyalist left and want to seek penance for the betrayals of their brothers. As you can imagine, this is a very rare occurrence and most watch commanders will only ever see like what, one or two of these guys throughout their entire length of service? This is like the closest thing a space marine could get to being a ronin of sorts, where they go about on their own and doing what they do. The reason that never really happens is because Space Marines are genetically hardwired to clump together. They have this need for group effort and working as a part of a unit. They can't like not do that. It's why Space Marines are unnerved when they see custodians fighting, because custodians fight as individuals, even when there's a lot of them. This is why Black Shields are such a rare occurrence, especially in the 41st millennium because it's just not what Space Marines are meant to do. Honestly, it's a bit of a shame because I think it's a really cool concept that we just don't see often. I would love to see more Black Shield Marines either on their own or in the Death Watch because the Death Watch themselves doesn't get enough love. It's a really cool organization. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Black Shields are a really interesting and underutilized concept, or do you think maybe it might just muddy the setting and is unnecessary, especially in 40k? Were you guys a fan of them back in 30k, or did you not care for them and just thought it was unnecessary fluff? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you guys, and until then, I will see you in the next video.